Hello, my name is Eric and welcome to Fine Mathematics on our continued conversation on executive functions. So for anybody that's new, this is going to be chapter two of the executive functions for student success. And just real quickly, these chapters are all coming from my upcoming book, Executive Functions, the Infrastructure for Student Success. So in these videos, I'm giving you just kind of the, the raw components. There's no anecdotal information or examples in these, just the raw components of that. And soon the book will come out that'll have all the, the uh, examples and other stories and stuff to kind of elucidate the points and the importance of it. But for today, we're starting chapter two. And chapter two is tools of the trade. And like the saying goes, what are the tools of the trade we need for student success? Well, it's gonna be from everything we need on a daily basis. Now you could think about from the last chapter like the environment and the desk and things like that. Yeah, that's all part of it. But these are things that we're gonna need daily or relatively daily. But before we go into that, I need to bring up the importance of this. Without the tools of the trade, they can become obstacles that just really slow down and impede a student success. But first things first, I need to differentiate between physical items and behavioral items. So tools of the trade is falling in the physical items, and that's including backpacks, binders, pens, pencils, computers, and things of that sort. I'm also throwing in this mix digital items. This could be online applications, online tools, um, emails, things, things of that nature too. It's not a behavioral thing. It's not a system. It's not a code or a routine we're going to do the process. Those are going to come in the next couple of chapters. So just the physical items we're talking about first, even from tangible to the non-tangible. Now, before I go any further also, let's kind of go through some of the things that can happen to a student if they don't have the proper tools of the trade. I've seen this countless times where I've worked with a student and we're trying to get work done. And I know it's already a difficult task because they're not into doing homework or doing the work. And this kind of gets compounded if they're used to operating at this level. So when they don't have the tools of the trade from a pen or the computer's not charged or no ink in the printer, you get the idea. These all impede the process and to the point to where they even stall it. And we have to even wait to the next day or delay it. And then over time, everything is getting delayed, delayed, delayed. And the quality of the work will go down because it's always at the last minute. And more importantly, we're also building up kind of a stigma. We're creating a stress because the student is getting stressed from worrying about where they're going to get the proper needed materials. And then that stress is getting stapled onto doing homework. So now when they're about their day, anytime they think about getting new work done or homework done, there's going to be this stress or the stigma or this kind of impedance that's going to come around it. So we want to try and avoid that. And we can avoid that by making sure we have all the proper tools of the trade. So from the last chapter on environment, which is chapter one, if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend watching those videos on environment to really set up your workspace for a student to be properly uh, uh, optimize, excuse me. So if you've done that already, then the tools of the trade should already have their places to go. And what I mean by that is in the desk area or a closet area, you have a couple spots where you're going to put all your supplies, your pens, your pencils, your paper, all that good stuff. And I'd recommend leave those areas, a drawer or two or a closet, leave them just for supplies. Remember, function first. We're setting up the environment, we're setting up the tools of the trade, and eventually the whole executive function process, infrastructure for the student, for success. This should take precedent. So most people and most students in their drawers, they may have stuff from years ago, personal items. I would just say, move this stuff somewhere else. And if you've watched the other uh, chapter on the environment, I've given you tips on how to go through to organize your stuff. And also more importantly, this is a great time to kind of get rid of a lot of stuff you just don't need anymore. So if you've set up your environment, you should already have a spot allocated to put all your system, uh, all your tools of the trade in place. The nice thing about that is when it's organized and it's really the, um, right at your workspace, the student can easily access the stuff quickly on a moment's notice. And it's also easy to notice when it's becoming depleted. Now, as a little side note, these executive functions are 
and these, this whole series is really for student success, but this can easily be tweaked for a home office or a business or whatever it is you're doing because everybody has their own personal executive functions even if they're not going through school. They have to manage your life. And like I'll be running kind of a, a motif through this whole book and this whole series is um, executive functions aren't just for school. When a student finishes high school and they go to college or go to work or whatever they're planning to do, you're not just going to forget about these. These hopefully will become the infrastructure which you start building other layers of your life on top of and managing things. So my point is you can easily tweak these things. So the list that I'm going to provide at the end of all this, all these videos for this chapter, I'll have my list of just the basics for student needs. These are very basic stuff. Um, but I'll put them at the very end of these videos so then you can just pause it and you can take a list of that. And eventually I'll make them available somewhere. But these are just, once again, just the basics of student needs. If you feel like you need some more, that's always great too. But there's one thing to keep in mind, and, and I'll kind of mention this er, um, in the later videos of this chapter. Keep things simple. We want to keep things simple and compact and as few things as possible. We want to minimize it. That way it's easier to maximize the success. Now the nice thing about having the tools of the trade set up, that it reduces the impedance of students wanting to go to work. So if we kind of follow the train here, the environment is set up, then we have the tools of the trade are put in their place. Therefore, when the student comes in to do work, all that's set up. Now there still may be a behavioral upgrade, um, you know, that we have to get used to wanting to sit down and do work, and that may take some time. Behavioral things will take a longer time to do. They'll take a longer time to change the student to those behaviors, and it's a long game process. But we don't want to have the simple stuff, like going out and just making sure we have the right supplies, getting in the way. This way, once again, we can start to kind of grease the wheels so when the student sits down at the workstation, which we've engineered, and the supplies are there, the only thing that's in the way now is getting the work going. There's no other obstacles, and these are relatively simple to do. Now the counter to this is, as I've already mentioned, if we wait and don't have the tools of the trade and we don't have the environment set up properly, then the quality of work will surely go down because everything's going to be at the last minute. Everything's usually going to be done in a haphazard way and with whatever materials are happen to be available. This is going to make studying in academia not a fun thing. It's going to put a negative stigma on it. And then more importantly, which is what we're trying to counter with this whole book I'm doing, the student success, is we're not reaching the student's maximum potential. Okay, thank you very much for watching this first uh, chapter two video on the tools of the trade. And I hope to see you again in the next videos. And remember, enjoy the process.